Hello, I'm Dr. John Iskander. Welcome to CDC Beyond the Data. I'm here today with Dr. Denise Jamison, Chair of Gynecology and Obstetrics at the Emory University School of Medicine. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. Our topic for this month's Grand Rounds is maternal immunization. And I wonder if you could just start us off with the basics what are the vaccines recommended during mm -hmm. pregnancy? So there are two vaccines that are recommended during pregnancy. One is influenza vaccine, which is the same vaccine that um, everybody should be getting during the flu season. And the other vaccine is the Tdap vaccine. Tdap is a newer vaccine and it helps protect babies once they're born against pertussis. And we rec so strongly recommend that um, pregnant women receive both of these vaccines. So um, those are very important recommendations. What do we know about the benefits of pregnant women receiving mm -hmm. those two vaccines? Well, we know that if pregnant women um, have influenza, they can get quite sick, severely ill. And so it's really important that pregnant women get vaccinated against influenza. And we've been making that recommendation as obstetricians, gynecologists for many decades. The Tdap vaccine, which I mentioned is a bit of a newer vaccine, is really primarily aimed at trying to protect babies once they're born and when they're too young to be immunized against pertussis. And so we recommend um, both of those during pregnancy. Yeah, and I, I think many of our viewers may know that, that pertussis in that early infancy period can, can be a life-threatening and even uh, and even uh, fatal illness. Yes, it can be very severe. And what we used to try to do is immunize those around the baby to, to protect the baby and cocoon the baby. And what we found was it didn't work all that well. And so a number of years ago, we changed our approach and now vaccinate the pregnant mother um, and that provides protection for the infant. So it's a different strategy and it's worked quite well. So um, what can you tell us in, in brief about um, the numerous uh, safety studies that have been done about use of these vaccines during pregnancy? So we know more about influenza vaccine in pregnancy than we know about any other vaccine. We have many decades of evidence showing that the vaccine is safe in pregnancy, and that's why we recommend it. Tdap is a newer vaccine, but there's a history of safety data around that vaccine as well. So overall, what I tell my pregnant patients is that it's important to be vaccinated, the vaccines are safe, and it can really make a difference. That's a very important and powerful uh, clinical message. Um, so as a public health and clinical community, how are we doing at giving these important vaccines to pregnant women? Well, we're not doing as well as we could be. So just to give you perspective, during the pandemic influenza, vaccine rates increased by about threefold. So it went from about 15% to about 50%. And really since then, a decade later, we still really haven't made a big um, impact on increasing vaccination rates, and there's still about half of pregnant women who don't get vaccinated. We do slightly better with Tdap, but only slightly. It's a little more than half of pregnant women get vaccinated for Tdap. So if you look at the whole picture, we really have a lot of room for improvement in both vaccines during pregnancy. Um, so, Dr. Jamison, you've been recognized by the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology as an immunization champion. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you and your team have done at Grady Hospital in Atlanta to improve immunization rates? Of course. Um, in our clinic, um, we have a lot of things in place that sort of make giving the vaccine easy and sort of routine. So we have the vaccine in clinic. Um, it's stocked um, in our clinic so that the nurse can easily give it without the patient having to go to a different place. We have standing orders so that there's not an extra step that the physician needs to do in order to give the vaccine. We have a policy where we train and retrain all our providers to universally recommend the vaccine to everybody during flu season. Um, and then we also train and retrain in terms of the Tdap as well. And then this past season, we did sort of more than we usually do. Those are the things that we usually do because we wanted to see if we could increase the vaccination coverage above the 50%. We're right at about the national average, about half of our patients receive the vaccine. And so um, with the um, 
uh, medical student in conjunction with medical students and public health students who have a lot of energy and a lot of great ideas. We did a lot for the clinic. So we had stickers that, that they designed. We had weekly um, celebrations and reminders. So at the um, in the middle of the day between the morning and the afternoon clinic on Fridays, we'd have a little celebration that usually involved food. Um, and we would make a presentation to the Emory and Morehouse resident who um, had the most patients vaccinated the previous week. We recognized the medical assistant and nurses who were acting as champions and really had great enthusiasm around the vaccines and the vaccine um, campaign. Um, we had pizza parties with, you know, cakes that were decorated with little cartoon um, vaccines. Again, I did not design them because I'm not that creative, um, but it's amazing what great ideas students come up with. And there was a lot of energy. We did a um, education campaign around um, immunization week. Um, so a lot of energy and enthusiasm went into um, supporting the staff and the faculty and the physicians and the students in promoting vaccines. And I think it was infectious. I think it also rubbed off on our patients. Um, and so we're hoping to do something similar this season. So it's fascinating, kind of this combination of some of the traditional sort of more technical approaches to mm -hmm. increasing vaccinates mm -hmm. with a lot of uh, a big layer of what we've come to be realize are these very important sort of soft skills on top mm -hmm. of them. Um, so for uh, providers looking to increase their maternal immunization rates or uh, people in public health looking to promote maternal immunization, um, are there some good uh, websites or uh, resources that they can turn mm -hmm. to? Yes, ACOG has a really nice toolkit on maternal immunization and resources that are available that give you um, patient education materials, give you information about how to stock um, and code for immunization in your practice. So a lot of really helpful, handy um, materials that can be used if you're interested in either starting um, to vaccinate in your practice or increasing your vaccination rates within your practice. Wonderful. So we'll provide that contact information for the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology uh, to our listeners. Um, again, thank you very much uh, for joining us today, Dr. Jameson. Thanks so much. It was great to be here. Please join us next time for Beyond the Data. <laughs> <laughs>